Well, good afternoon, listeners. Here we are once again to discuss you and the law. Today, we are very fortunate to have with us Dr. B.S. Patil, who is the Assistant Professor of V.M. Salgonkar College in Panjim. Doctor, thank you very much for spending time with us to understand what this disability law is all about. Because we know of some blind people, we know of some people who are lame, but to understand the law, why it came in the first place, please help us to understand why. Why did the law have to come to understand disability? Uh, disability or persons with disability, they are almost invisible to the world. And that's why we call them as an invisible minority. Okay. They are the largest minority in the world because there are almost 200 million people with a kind of disability that live. You may ask me that I don't see anybody. You don't see because they don't come out. And they don't come out because they can't move around freely. Because our roads, buses and buildings are so hostile to them that they get confined to the home. So therefore, there is a need to look into their needs. And we need to recognize their needs. So that's why uh, United Nations organization thought of working towards these rights of disabled persons and uh, with the progress of uh, time civilization because there is a saying that to know the level of civilization you don't look into the middle of the society look at the fringe oh, edge of the society yeah. how well they are living that decides the level of civilization so, oh, that's, so that's the uh, criteria on which oh. UN started working and they came up with seven conventions and then authorities to look after the rights of disabled persons. India is not lagging behind but we being a developing country, uh, we are the main contributors to the persons of disability because 70% of disabled peoples are found in underdeveloped and developing countries there is a very close correlation between disability and poverty. So therefore, law has to come into picture to cover their requirements and needs. So what you are saying is that out of the 70% mm -hmm. who are in the poor or underdeveloping nations, it is linked to poverty in a great way. Yes. Malnutrition contributes 20% of disability. And along with malnutrition, then there is a second contributor is uh, infectious diseases. Okay, right. And these are the common things in tropical regions. And poverty is the place where malnutrition is maximum. So they contribute 40% of disability. Right. Hereditary and then lifestyle, these are other things which contribute. But these are the main contributors. So, Doctor, tell me in, in our law, that the Disability Act of India, uh, how many disabilities have been actually uh, certified as disabilities? Uh, see, disability is a complex process and there are, there are a lot of complexity in it. To broadly classify, law recognizes uh, physical disability like blindness, hearing impairment, uh, uh, and then uh, locomotor disability, that is physical. Then there's intellectual disability, that is a learning disability, understanding disability. Then there is mental disability, that is where the person's ability to deal with people is under question. And then there's multiple disability, where it's a combination of more than one. And then we have kept the door open so that we can include more and more disabilities. There's one interesting disability that has been added now in 2016 that is uh, disease-caused disability like Parkinson's disease, okay, right. age-related diseases. That also can lead to uh, scler sclerosis. Yeah, that's right. so, yeah, these are also recognized as disabilities. Now, Dr. Patil, uh, the thing is that uh, let us say there is a person who is uh, who's, uh, not able to understand or learn properly. 
how does the certification take place that he has this problem? Who, who certifies that uh, that he is? Uh, uh, I can understand if somebody is blind or somebody is lame or somebody is deaf or dumb. I can understand that. But as you said, Parkinson's or something mm -hmm. like that. How does he get a certificate to say that yes, I I am a disabled person? See, there is a strong certification process is there. Uh, many people question all these uh, hassles created by the state. I I do understand that state wants the benefits to reach to the real needy persons and the fraudsters in between they don't siphon off the things mm. that's why there's so many uh, beefs and buts have been added right, into yeah, the right, rules right. certification is done by gmc okay. Goa medical college right. and uh, there thursday there's a day fixed in which they do the conduct conduct the tests as you said it is much easier to test physical disability much much easier but when it comes to intellectual disability uh, uh, there is IQ test done by the doctors and the doctors do give the certification and uh, this intellectual disability is something which you can possibly overcome so therefore you have to take a retest after every few years and then you will be certified by that no, but for example Parkinson's uh, there's no question of uh, retest because once he is certified as yes is, that's for life I mean I mean as far as I understand Parkinson's disease yeah, so that is one of those problems. Okay, so let us say that somebody has really a problem and GMC, as you say, does not certify him. Mm. Has the disabled person recourse to law? Yes, definitely yes, because if uh, the certification is denied and denied wrongly, mm. then there is a provision to approach court. In the recent legislation, I think uh, state of Goa is lagging behind in this because they have not framed rules under this new legislation. Central government passed it in the year 2016. Now we are in 19, almost crossed the middle of 19. So still we are awaiting the passing of the rules. I have been informed that it would come very soon. But Till that comes, we are not having a law because we are going to go by the law, oh, the old law. Under the new law, if somebody denies something like this uh, without justification, you can always approach fast track court because there is a special court established under disability law. Then there is chief commissioners appointed at central, state and there are committees appointed at district level. Okay. So these people are looking into individual problems, policy issues. Then, let's say I am mentioning about future, present and enforcement. All three are taken care of. There is a central advisory committee, state advisory committee and district level committees who look into policies, future development of uh, disability rights, protection of persons with disability. So this is all taken care of. So in case of uh, any issues with uh, denials and other things, they, they have a recourse. And uh, under uh, Article 32 of Constitution and even 226, they can always approach High Court, file a writ. Mm -hmm. Recourses are available. That's definitely they are available. Nobody, no, but, uh, nobody can take us for uh, granted. Doctor, these advisory committees, as you say, are there. Can they pressurize the state government? Three years, the law has been passed and there's still no rules. Can the advisory committee push these guys to do something? Yes, definitely. But what happened is uh, from our side, from my side, from my college side, we have been uh, put uh, sending requisitions. We filed a few RTIs and uh, there are some organization, active organization in Goa by name DRAG. There is IDARE. They are also pressurizing the government through petitions, RTI applications. But somehow there is a, there is a delay and to some extent political volatile, volatile situation in Goa also might have contributed yeah, to it. Right. Yeah, that's true. But it is going to come very soon. Hope but, so. uh, but then doctor, if there is uh, this delay and there is this RTI to support, doesn't the government take any cognizance of this kind of things? Government is busy <laughs> and as I mentioned, uh, Disabled person is an invisible minority. That's right. Yeah. His uh, interest comes last. Okay, doctor, now we have got these lame people, the blind people and those kind of things. 
Is there some special training given to them so that they can look after their own livelihood as part of the government service to this uh, minority population? Yeah, I, uh, that's a very important question because as I said in the beginning, poverty and disability is correlated and actually it forms a cycle. So poverty leads to disability and disability leads to poverty right. because of, as you said, employability is a major exactly, issue. Exactly, that's right. Yeah. So a training, I consider two levels. Education is entirely different set, then training is another set. Education, yes, state uh, is doing a lot about it. Under the law, there is 5% reservation for uh, children with disability. And then uh, inclusive education is one major concern because uh, special schools are only in exceptional cases when the children is suffering from severe disability. Right. Otherwise, inclusive education, they should go to normal schools. They should be visible to the society. Then the care and uh, tolerance and appreciating difference yeah. comes. We don't like difference. We don't like diversity. Even though the India is a diverse country, this is one kind of diversity which we should accept. People will not be same. They are different. So therefore, education is taken care of. Training in Goa, Polytechnic College of Alti, they do the training for the persons with disability. Mm -hmm. DRAG uh, has uh, conducted few training courses, yes, right. but most importantly, again, we should not stereotype disabled by giving them training and setting aside some jobs for them. Because the moment you talk about employability of disability, stitching uh, boxes and uh, sweaters comes yeah, to our yes, mind. Right, yeah. Why they should do only those things? Yeah. Why can't they become IS officers? See, doctor, the, you said that 5% of uh, employability is specially reserved for uh, disabled people. Now, my question is very simple. Who is monitoring this 5%? Who is making sure that every employer has minimum 5% in his role? Especially the big guys, the fellows who employ 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 people. I understand uh, uh, Infosys has got 125,000 people in the world. Mm. How many uh, people have they got who are uh, in this kind of a situation? No, state has a limitation here. When they say reservation in the government jobs only, that's a real limitation they have. But what state of Goa has done, they have given incentives to the private employer if you employ persons with disability, they incentivize his business by giving financial support to his business. Oh, I see. Okay. So because we can't force them, state cannot force them. So they incentivize employability. So therefore, that employability has improved. Can that be uh, kind of uh, put into kind of some kind of numbers as to what is this incentive? Uh, in, uh, Incentivizing was an old scheme, ah. which was say 25,000 rupees or 30,000 rupees, some amount was paid to the employer if he is willing to employ persons with disability. 25,000 per year? Per year. Okay. Right. Not great amount, ah. but uh, there was some no, incentivization was there. Doctor, on another slightly different issue, we have the right to education. Mm. Under that law, children between 6 and 14 mm. are have the right to get free education. Yes. Is there anything in the law for these are disabled people which is better than 6 to 14? As of uh, employable, uh, this education is concerned, as I said, Right to Education Act is there. In addition to that, it covers only 6 to 14. The Persons with Disability Act covers education uh, up to higher education as well as super specialization. So there is a 5% reservation for all educational institutions has to take students with disability. Okay. So primary education is covered under Right to Education Act, but whereas uh, for persons with disability, it extends beyond primary okay, education. Right. Okay, okay. Now, uh, if the person uh, wants to get educated more, okay, uh, can the schools or colleges say no because you're disabled i can't admit you is that is there uh, a thing like that that the 
principal of the school can say, sorry, I, I can't admit you? Uh, suitability is an issue. Um, many of us question the suitability based upon our pre-notions. Okay. Say, for example, uh, how a blind person can be a teacher. Because under uh, for us, general understanding is we need to control the class. That's right, yeah. I met a blind professor. He said, why there is need to control the class? Whoever is interested will listen. So when he has a class, a clerk walks in front of him, takes the attendance, goes out. And he takes a lecture for one hour. So, and his experience is they are listening silently. Uh. Because the job of a lecturer is dissemination of information rather than disciplining the students. Yes, I believe your uh, Salwankar College has uh, has got actually two or three students who are disabled and, and yes. studying there. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, Doctor? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, one student is in second year. Uh, he is having a vision disability. He cannot see. And uh, he is showing a lot of interest in learning law and very happy with him. Uh, recently, he participated at a uh, uh, selection process. So he got selected with his own uh, knowledge of law and most importantly his skills of argument and he came one day and he said sir my only issue is with english i'm more fluent with konkani otherwise i understand your lecture very well oh. there is one more student who is having a learning disability he joined this year oh. he is doing well uh, one more student is there with locomotor disability he can't move he is wheelchair bound that boy is a great inspiration for everyone because he is learning very well He's doing very well. And he has put every one of us on toes. Uh, now, every teacher, as I said, the moment you come across with the challenge, you start thinking about it. Now, teachers come, they discuss that uh, we should prepare voice notes uh. for the blind student. So they're, they're giving synopsis in voice notes. And uh, they are asking him to record our lecture. And he has a specific place because he relies heavily on his hearing ability. So he has a specific place to sit where he says it's the best place to hear. And he sits there and listens to the class. Uh, and I, I see there's change in the students. The moment they see this thing, there is acceptance. And during the break, while I'm passing by the classroom, I see many people interacting with them, okay. talking to them. So I must compliment uh, Salgaonka Law College for doing this because yeah. I don't think there are many colleges uh, in India that do these kind of things. You know? Yeah, see, this is uh, this is three things. But uh, earlier we used to have a temporary disablement, yeah. like a person met with an accident. So we used to shift the whole class to the ground floor to accommodate that yeah, child. Right. And then we used to shift the uh, examination sections to the ground floor. There yeah. is a word that is used called equal opportunity. Mm. What is that about? I cannot understand it. Now, see, when it, what we want from the society, dignity, opportunity, ah. acceptance of diversity. That's right, yeah. Correct. So once you give these three things, disabled people can take care of themselves. So when you talk about equal opportunity, uh, let me give uh, the difference between impairment and uh, handicap disablement. Okay. Impairment is a problem with the body. Say, I don't have eyes. That's impairment. Correct. That impairment leads to handicap. Handicap is because I don't have an opportunity to study. Handicap has nothing to do with body. Okay. It's, it's lack of opportunity. That's right. That leads to disability. I cannot be employed because I am not studying. That is disability. We mix everything and blame the person. Person has only impairment. Disability is created by the society. Because if society was considerate of him, he wouldn't have never been disabled. He would have only impaired. Wow, that's quite a, a significant uh, statement you are making, uh, doctor. Because uh, we never uh, linked impairment by itself. Yeah. Impairment and disability are for us the same, same thing. Yeah. But you have now put it very, very well that impairment is the problem, disability is society's problem. Yes. The question is how. 
how are we going to solve this problem for because we are already now so many years in independence yes and we are so, so, so. Uh, actually you know west is the best guide for us because if you go to western countries and other things they are very very disabled friendly uh, premises and everything are disabled friendly so it requires a lot of uh, thinking research technological development uh, access is the issue once you make things accessible to them they are going to flourish they are really smart people only thing is they are not been given an opportunity yeah we don't have even access to the buses and trains yeah. never mind uh, college institution and training institution uh, yeah okay now uh, uh, one last question doctor uh, what is the advice you would give a parent who has a disabled child what is the best thing he or she can do to give him an opportunity to be equal in society what what is the advice you can give first thing is i must say that they are the greatest people on earth because child mortality of a uh, disabled child mortality is 80% in india okay. at least they accepted him and his child of their child yeah, and alive right. because many 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 parents kill in the infancy because uh -huh. they don't want to take care of a disease that's right, yes that's a great thing they have done they have kept the child with them second thing is treating the child as one among the other children is the best thing they can do don't give them any special treatment because they are children and when they grow up they grow up into adulthood disability is only an impairment don't attribute anything to that now say for example disabled persons a blind is a blind that's it nothing more than that don't uh, t uh, t term it as a saintly person and other thing blind need not be saint that's right he can yeah. be he can be smart yeah, yeah. <laughs> he can be chalu <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. so is just a blind that's, that's it right. nothing more than that that's right yeah see what we do is we are we connect everything with this uh, impairment yeah, so right. what i wa request parents is don't connect things keep it separate treat him as a human being give him an opportunity i just want to ask one last question if i may this blind person who is learning with you all now mm. what do you think are his future prospects in life will he become a lawyer will he become a professor what what do you think will be his uh, his uh, uh, future in terms of making his own livelihood mr vesel during your uh, adulthood i think 1989 and 90s there was a landmark case called mandal commission uh -huh. case the case was relating to reservation there was one advocate who argued that reservation to backward class includes socially backward that is physically disabled okay the man arguing before the supreme court was blind himself all oh, right okay dr rungta so he can be advocate and i have given example of a professor blind professor yes, he had done his phd in england he, that's what and uh, he used to tell that for me ease of working is important and for my wife aesthetic is important which is meaningless to me is to yes, say sir. because flower was and other thing used to hate and but wife was more after that so for uh, amit his name is amit my student's name is amit for him sky is the limit because his impairment is not going to hold him back anyway so doctor thank you, thank you so much for sharing your not only your your views as a as a professor of law but also as a human being because that is what is so important in our lives and i think you have come out very strongly as both as a excellent teacher as well as a strong human being thank you thank so you. much yeah. thank you very much